Lucy? Yes, thank you. Okay. All right, Let you me can know. start. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining us for our live training on maintaining positive morale among employees. Um, if you would like to add um, where you're from in the chat window, then please go ahead. We're just going to ask everyone to mute themselves. If you have any quick questions, feel free to throw them in the chat and Kara will do her best to answer them. I'm going to stay on at the end and um, answer any questions joining. that you may have um, to the best of my ability. So those who have to leave um, at 2.30 are free to leave and if anyone else wants to stick around, then um, we're going to do that. That seemed to work last week really well with teams. So. Uh, my name is Jackie Gallioni, and I do training, culture, and leadership development um, at CompuVision. So, maintaining positive morale among employees is important at any time. It becomes even more important in the middle of a pandemic when they're all of a sudden everywhere, um, working from home, and that you have remote employees. So, we just want to walk you through um, what I think are a, some key. Um, concepts around maintaining positive morale and positive culture and then walk you through some of the things that we do at CompuVision um, to help us uh, build our culture. So maintaining positive morale starts with a solid foundation. So keep doing what you're doing. It's going to look different now than it looked a month and a half ago. And so you're going to have to be innovative and figure out new and different ways. But if you have a good foundation, then make sure you don't lose that just because we're in the middle of a pandemic and employees aren't in front of you. Our foundation is our three core values. Be curious, go beyond, and serve as one. And we hire, fire, reward, promote, and recognize based on our core values. And as a company, I would say you could ask anyone in our company what are our three core values, and they would be able to give them to you. We really do um, use these in our everyday life at CompuVision. And I'm going to walk you through some of the ways that we do that. But so just to walk you through a little bit, um, be curious. We went through a process last fall and then this spring where we really dug in and defined what it means for each of these core values. And so if you want, if you're interested in how we did that, then feel free to reach out to me and I can walk you through that process. Um, it's very simple. But what we did is following Brene Brown's concept of operationalizing core values. We came to some common understanding and then operationalized it. So I took everybody's um, input into what our, each core value meant and didn't mean and then wrote an overarching statement. So be curious is about challenging status quo, continual improvement and constantly learning. And then we defined what we said are core behaviors and additional behaviors. Some core behaviors of be curious is I listen, seeking to understand and not to respond. I build relationships with my colleagues and my clients. I speak up when I think something is not right or if I have an idea. I admit when I'm wrong, learn from my mistakes. I ask questions and seek answers when I'm unsure and do not understand. And I have a growth mindset and I'm open and excited about possibilities. So go beyond is about exceeding expectations. Some examples of behaviors include I step up to lead when appropriate, regardless of whether it's my job title. I lead by example. I know my limits and ask for support when I need it. And I pitch in to help even if it's not part of my regular work duties. Serve as one is a belief that together we're greater than the sum of our individuals and that teamwork is essential to success. And so some behaviors that we defined were I hold my account colleagues accountable when appropriate. I believe that together we are greater than the sum of our individual. I take responsibility for my mistakes and do not hold others mistakes against them in the future. I'm professional and respectful and I pick up the slack of dropped balls without external blame. To the client. And so we actually have um, a lot more definitions in there. I just didn't want to take. Oh, I lost my. Somebody else started sharing. There's one second. Okay. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Yes. Don't hit the little arrow that says share screen. <laughs> okay. So there those are go. values. Um, and we use these in our one on ones. We use them as part of our when we do a people analyzer following the entrepreneurial operating system. We look at people who meet these core values as the people that we want to promote. They hey, Jackie, are it's still not sharing for you. Still not sharing. Yeah, can we do that again? I don't know if I can figure out. Is 
Is it sharing now? Yes. Okay. There we go. It's just someone took over your share. Oh, I just okay. limited that. I, my okay. fault. <laughs> well, live and learn. We are being curious. We've not ever done this. This is like I think our third one or our fourth one. So we're we're learning. So thank you all for your uh, for your patience with us. Um, I always joke that CompuVision, while full of um, amazing technical people, I'm not one of them. So, what are your company core values? Um, do you have them defined? Does everybody know what they are? And how do you live them every day? So feel free to throw your core values into the chat window and we'd love to, to see what they are. So for me, a, a core foundation of building positive morale and a solid team is um, Patrick Lencioni's um, ideas in the five dysfunctions of a team. So th this, the concepts in this book are foundational in our leadership development program. He also has a companion book, Overcoming the Five Dysfunctions of a Team, a field guide, which is full of exercises and assessment and tools to help you address the five dysfunctions. Um, and their website is thetablegroup.com. They've been actually doing even some webinars during COVID. So looking at the five dysfunctions of a team, and I'm just gonna do a really quick recap in case anyone hasn't done it. Um, but the first dysfunction is, the, is an absence of trust. And so there's a fear that being vulnerable will prevent your team members from building trust. And it starts with the leader. So the leader needs to be vulnerable and open, um, admit mistakes and be willing to listen. It's really important to build that trust. Um, everything in the pyramid builds on the level below. So dysfunction two is a fear of conflict and the idea that we only get through to the best ideas when we have had good healthy conflict, not unhealthy conflict, but when we've had good debate and we can't have debate without having trust. The third dysfunction is a lack of commitment, which is a lack of clarity or buy-in that prevents the team members from making the decision. And he talks about it in the book about this executive team that decided they were going to put a freeze on hiring and they didn't come to a common commitment as to what that meant. So every department, when they walked out of the meeting, thought it didn't apply to them. Um, dysfunction four is an avoidance of accountability um, so that people they need to avoid interpersonal discomfort prevents team members from holding each other accountable for behaviors and for performance and so when you build trust and you have that then you're able to hold each other uh, accountable and so the belief that employees and colleagues are just as um, essential to holding people accountable as the manager and then dysfunction five, the inattention to results, that the pursuit of individual goals and personal status erodes the team focus. So um, with this and looking at how do I build trust um, amongst my team, because that is the, the base layer and none of the rest of it um, functions without um, that building of, of, tr of trust, then I think one of the most important things is just by building relationships. And you do that, I believe, by reaching out personally. So not a, a group email, but touching out one-on-one, um, -on -one, whether it's video calls. Um, we start our level 10 meetings, which are our weekly team meetings with one good thing, business and personal. And that gets us in the habit of working um, out of working in the business to working on the business. But also it helps you learn something about your colleagues. And so as a manager, or, or supervisor, I'm taking notes. So when somebody talks about the best part of their week was coaching soccer on the weekend, I'm gonna, I know I can start talking to them about soccer and I can build that relationship through, through that. If they've talked about a really great concert that they went to see, then you can ask them about that and maybe um, you, you share a love of music or the same music. And so if you, some people are naturally able to just listen to all of these um, one good things and to pick up little bits and pieces to learn about people and some people just naturally aren't like that and so what I suggest is keeping a notebook or a one note where you just make little notes about people so that you know how to go back and, and follow up with them later um, because when you're able to do that that really just means a lot. You can also just start a meeting with a question about um, tell me about your weekend or what's something you've done lately, a favorite TV show you've watched, a good movie, a good book, just a way to get to know people on a little bit more of a personal level. You can have group um, group chats. We at CompuVision use Teams, so we have lots of um, group team chats. And just having regular check-ins. When people are working remotely, it's even more important to check in with them. Make sure that everything's going okay. And don't just accept that, is everything going okay? Yep. 
really dig in op answer or ask open ended questions and probe. We use the acronym TED. Tell me more, explain, describe. So when you don't know what to say, you can say, tell me more about that. Could you explain that? Describe what that was like. And so it really just helps dig in and get um, get deeper because oftentimes people won't just come out when they're struggling, won't come out and just say it in the, in the first uh, after the first question. Uh, personal touch points can uh, be the one on ones, uh, quarterly reviews if you do them, um, even informal check ins, just even a team's message or a phone call to somebody saying, hey, how's it going today? Or do you have anything you're struggling with? Is there anything I can do to help you? Um, some teams have daily huddles or they have their weekly team meetings. So whatever your rhythm was, I'd say you want to keep that rhythm and possibly even add to it. Communication is critical, and I've heard um, a saying several times that it often takes people seven times hearing something before they'll hear it for the first time. And so you have to say things in many different ways, right? People learn things. Some people will learn by or, or hear things by reading and some by by listening. And so you need to have communication channels that are varied. So be as transparent as possible given the situation. So tell your employees, I believe that honesty, they will respect that and that builds um, as well builds trust. In the absence of information, people will make up a story. So if they don't know, then they're making up a story and many of them will make up the worst case scenario. And so just like when you look at a photograph and it's of a tree and part of the tree is cut off, your mind will actually fill in those details. So your mind will fill in the details um, of the situation in your business as well if you don't communicate that. So I say you couldn't, you can't really over communicate. Make sure that it's coming from different levels that is coming from your executive team, from your supervisors, um, that the messaging is, is consistent and that people are really um, hearing what they need to hear. Make sure that you can share out resources and find out like maybe a planned rhythm, maybe weekly where you can share out um, information either about your business or about benefits at your offers. If you have a, an employee and family assistance program like we do, we share that information out consistently because sometimes people just forget about that. So encourage social interaction wherever you can. So again, it's about building relationships. So relationships are the key of what I believe um, makes a workplace um, better and builds trust. So many people are going to miss what we call the, the water cooler talk. They go and get their coffee and they are. Um, they just run into somebody and you just have a conversation. And so you, you have to facilitate that in different ways when they can't physically run into each other. So whether it's a, a group chat, I know some times people have been doing um, team lunches, so they'll all just sort of sit and eat in front of the camera and, and have a conversation and talk and chat. I would suggest video meetings rather than just voice meetings. Um, somehow there's something about seeing somebody on the other end of that discussion or on the other end of that camera that makes it different than just hearing their voice. It seems to make it a little more uh, human, I've heard. So, uh, some of the uh, available streams you could use, you could use like an online chat, whether you have Teams or Slack or Skype. Um, there's social media tools, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, phone calls, video meeting, um, text messages. So we would suggest you reach out to um, colleagues and to your employees, but also even to vendors and clients. It's just all right now about building relationships. So I also think it's really important to help create balance when working from home. I was on a meeting this morning with a bunch of my leadership um, group and a couple of them just talked about how it's really hard to turn off, that they don't know when the end of day comes and that there's no break between work and home. They get up and then maybe they sit on the couch instead of having that commute that really turns your mindset into, OK, I'm now at work, I'm getting ready to work and now I'm leaving work and I'm getting ready for home. And so um, it's making sure that they're not just working um, crazy hours, that they are taking breaks, that they're looking after themselves. Mental health during a pandemic is already taking a big hit. And so we just want to be really careful that we are checking in with our people and that they um, were taking care of them. So there's an importance of lunch breaks. So make sure that they're they're not just working through um, lunch. They're stopping and taking a break, whether now that the weather is nicer here, um, they can go for if they want to go for a walk or just um, sit and have some quiet time, read a book. 
that um, whether there's uh, virtual lunches like we've talked about is another option. So what do we do at CompuVision? Uh, we do a bunch of different things, and I'm just going to walk you through um, some of them. So um, Amplify is an online engagement pro um, employee engagement program that we use, and I'm going to walk through each one of these with some examples. Um, Recognize is a peer recognition program that we use. Uh, we do uh, client and peer um, accolades. We have a weekly meeting, um, either a jam or a super jam or a staff meeting, depending on which Friday it is. We have uh, monthly staff lunches. We use Teams um, extensively, and we also have birthday and anniversary celebrations. So Amplify is an online employee engagement tool, and it sends out quarterly questionnaire. The questions are the same, and what Amplify does is we have them divided out by teams. So we have a strategy and or service um, in different the different pillars in our company, and it will compile overall results and also department results, and it creates um, suggestions, offers suggestions, and so what we get with Amplify is actually a dedicated support person that will help us read the data and understand it, give us some suggestions about what we can do to, to improve it. And then we're able to work with each department at CompuVision and help them figure out how they want to address um, any of the challenges, how they want to celebrate their successes. And then we as an HR department are able to support them, um, support them through that. If Amplify sees that one particular department is low in a certain area, then they'll send up, uh, they'll send out an open ended question for them to ask and dig in and more information. So Amplify is a third party tool. It is 100% anonymous for our employees. We have no idea who has said what. All we ever get is compiled results. So it's really important if you're using something like Amplify that your employees know and understand and trust that um, you don't have access to that data so that they're truly honest and you get an, um, a good picture. Recognize app is configurable social employee recognition and rewards program. So it's an we can have a there's an add-in through Outlook where we can go to our recognize um, website that's dedicated to CompuVision, and from there I can send a really quick recognition. It's pre-populated with our um, employees, and so I just start typing a name, and it will find them. I can type in my recognition, and what's really neat about recognize is that it's tied to our values. So they can't submit it until they say um, that they are um, which value somebody has lived that they want to recognize them for. So it really allows employees to recognize their peers for living our values. And so there is a stream. Every time you get a recognition, you get an email notification of it. You can re respond to it. And then there's a stream so we can go on. And this is what the part of the stream looks like. So this is one that um, Nathan Lee sent to me a couple of weeks ago about the online training. I heard the online training went well. Thanks for stepping up and helping out our marketing department with content and training. And then I was able to um, respond to that, which was really nice. So those will show on on a screen. And then we take this a step further. I was at a conference, a culture conference a couple years ago and heard about this managed service provider on the East Coast of the United States. And for every peer recognition, they gave their employees a piece of Lego. So I thought that would probably uh, be a hit at CompuVision. And, and it is Lego Day is um, one of the happiest days of the month. So when we do that, I can pull a report out of Recognize and I create our own little. I do these on a quarter fold sheet of paper and then for every recognition that they get, we call them cheers for peers for every recognition that they get, they get a piece of Lego. And so when you walk around the office, you see little Lego building concoctions all over people's desks. There's teams that have. Uh, compiled them and shared them and built something bigger. I hear about um, Lego trading. I need a wheel. Oh, I have a wheel. I want a steering wheel. And um, I even heard recently of somebody having a bet like I bet you it works like this. And they, the bet was five pieces of Lego. So um, it's really part of our culture and is, is quite it's quite fun. So normally I hand out Lego um, once a month and for our typical remote workers, I actually mail them their Lego. Now in the middle of this, I can't mail Lego to every one of our employees. So I'm just compiling them all still and I will hand out all their Lego 
when we get back into the office. So it's not on hold, it's just temporary delayed. So we also have an accolades feed. We have two TVs in our kitchens and they show live stream. One is our live stream of our um, recognitions and the other is a live stream of positive comments that come from our clients. And that way people, as they're sitting, eating lunch in the kitchen, they're able to see uh, all the really great things that are being said about their peers. And so I just really think it's um, important that we share that information as many times as possible and that it becomes um, public. So this is an example of one of the- Oh, sorry, Jackie, I have to cut in. We don't do that right now during COVID, obviously, because no one's in the office, but you've actually set it up so that everyone can still see it during COVID. Oh yes, yes. So we are still putting them on in the in the kitchen so that the our skeleton crew can see them. Um, but we also have um, we send a link out so that anyone can view them, and we we show them through our HR SharePoint so that anyone who wants to look through them can see them. So thanks. And you can see on the bottom um, where it says go beyond, we're able to tag our values into them, and and that's um, that carries through. So on Friday. At 4.30, we have Friday Jam, which is a really great tradition. We have everyone comes into our kitchen, our remote people join us um, via Teams, and we have a beer or a pop or, or a drink, and we celebrate our, our week. And so it always starts with shout outs, and anyone in our company can do a shout out. And a shout out is just a, like a verbal recognition for somebody who has lived our values this week. And so we always have lots of just our, um, Lots of our employees will give shout outs to, uh, to other people and they're really fun to hear. We also do uh, celebrations. So we look, we celebrate um, birthdays and work anniversaries. We talk about which allowances were sent out, which our allowance program is anyone in our company can send up to like about a $50 gift to our clients or anyone at our clients um, for anything, whether, you know, they've heard that they've had a baby or got married or it's an important event. And so we just give them free reign for that. And then we share all those. We have a new business update. Um, we give any kind of social committee announcements. Um, this is where we share a lot of our company announcements. Um, the last Friday we have a, what we call a super jam. It's just a little bit more, um, information that when we actually use a slide deck, the Friday jam is pretty informal. But our Super Jam will also share our, our employee of the month and our big hairy audacious goal update. So we share that every single month. Uh, we track it and have a number and um, we give that update every month to our employees. So once a quarter, we have a full staff meeting. Uh, it starts a little bit, it's a little bit longer than an hour. Um, we start with celebrations. We talk about any positions that we're hiring for, any social committee announcements, allowance, and a new business updates. Company, so we have general company announcements and we also have department updates. So every department will do a couple slides on what they've been working on for the last quarter. We have our big, hairy, audacious goal and our noble promise updates. And so our noble promise is our just cause. And we just have to talk about examples of, of, of that every quarter. Um, EOS is the entrepreneurial operating system. And so this is how we run our business. Um, every quarter we come up with new rocks. Um, which are priorities and so we share those out with what is the company rocks for the quarter and we end with employee of the month. So staff lunches typically when we're in the office we have we bring in and cater a lunch. Lately we've had to do um, a little bit different because we can't just come together and cater so what we've done is lunch around the world and we ask everyone to just post in our we have a general teams channel and we ask them to post pictures of their lunch and then people can comment and it's kind of like we can um, we can live together. We're going to try something new after our super jam this Friday or after our staff meeting this Friday and just said anyone who wants to stay and hang out on um, teams is able to just we'll have like a virtual um, hangout after. Um, so that'll be really fun, I think, to, to try out. We use Microsoft Teams quite a bit. Uh, we use it for um, instant messaging and chat. And what we did was when we moved to work from home during this pandemic, we created a general um, channel. And so anyone can post anything. And um, Jamie, who is one of our awesome employees, writes used to write an inspirational quote in the bathroom mirrors 
And so she's taken to writing one um, every day in in general. So you can see success doesn't come from what you do occasionally. Oh, it didn't. It comes from what you do all the time. I didn't expand it. Um, then she there's another one about the around the world lunch theme. And so people can reply and they can like things and they can post memes. And so it just becomes um, some funny people will be sharing all kinds of things. There's also a rec room in there where people are playing games together. So this is a, a personal favorite of mine is our birthday and anniversary celebrations. So for a birthday, we give somebody a birthday card with a small Starbucks gift card. And for our anniversaries, we about a week beforehand, um, our HR department will reach out to someone's colleagues and their supervisor and just say, could you give me examples of how this employee lives our values? And then we compile them all into what we hope is the nicest email they've ever gotten all year. And as well, we do a phone call from our CEO. So Ryan Bestby calls every single person on their birthday and on their work anniversary. And I, I can hear the CEOs going, oh, no, 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 please. So we make it as easy as, as possible. Um, and we set up a calendar invite. Um, we invite Ryan and in the place or the location, we literally type the phone number that he needs to call. So on the way home, he usually just calls people on his on his commute home and he just has to hit the phone number and it, and it loads up. So the calls are maybe five or 10 minutes. It means the world to the employees. Um, it took us a little while for people to kind of get used to it because they used to be scared. So he used to have to start a phone call. With the, You're not in trouble. Nothing's wrong. I just really wanted to wish you a happy anniversary. So um, generally the first year people are a little nervous, but after that they they um, they really truly like it. And I believe it's a differentiator for the CEO to take an interest in every one of our employees. And we have over 100 employees and he does it for every single one of them. So 200, uh, Jackie. Over 200. Oh, over 200. Sorry. sorry. Over 200. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I apparently don't take care of the numbers. <laughs> um, but we make it as easy as possible. And his belief that if people are important to your organization, you make time to do it. And while it sounds like a lot, um, it isn't in, in practice. And the return on investment that we get for it is immeasurable. Um, I'm going to uh, leave this up for a little bit. This was my anniversary email that. Um, Kara had compiled and, and sent to me and it will be in the slide deck that we send out after so you can read it. Um, I'm happy to give you the structure that we use for these. They're really quite easy and while I don't write them um, anymore, they were probably one of the mo most favorite things that I used to, to do. So uh, we really try and live our values. Uh, we tie them into shout outs to recognize to anniversary celebrations um, into all our recognition. And so that to us really is what we feel builds a strong culture and helps us um, helps us maintain um, positive morale. So I can come back to this one after you guys can see it in the thing. So we have some upcoming training next week. Um, I believe it's Ryan's going to walk us through what he's, we've learned through the, the pandemic. Um, on May 6th, we had a lot of requests to redo the fishing training. So we're going to do that with some emphasis on some of the fishing um, that's happened, it's COVID based. And then May 13th, we're going to look at some scheduling assistance, buying time and Calendly. And so you can follow us on Twitter, compuvision.biz or at Jackie Surgeoner. And I wanted to leave with a quote that just says, integrity is choosing courage over comfort. It's choosing what's right over what's fast, fun, or fun, fast, or easy. It's practicing your values, not just professing them. So I believe this one speaks to me because I believe that um, at CompuVision we do everything we can to live our values. So I challenge you to share um, or think about or tweet um, what is one thing that you can do within the next week that would in influence um, employee morale. Um, this quote is from Brene Brown, who I think does a fabulous job around um, around this work. So. Thank you. Um, look at that 2.30 on the dot. That's great. <laughs> I'm happy to stick around. If, if anyone has to go, then that's fine. If people want to stick around and ask some questions in the chat, I can turn the slideshow off and we can have a little bit more of a conversation. So thank you all for joining us. And I know Kara will follow up with um, an email with the slide deck. And we hope that you're able to join us and that you found um, at least one idea uh, today that will help you in your business. Kara, anything? No, just thanks everybody for coming. And if you have a question, turn off your mic and ask it of Jackie.
Okay, I'm going to try and get teams back up there. Okay. I think we're there. <laughs> so Jackie Norma said, love the anniversary email. Great job. I will definitely borrow that idea from you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm just loading the chat. Oh, yes. And um, feel free to reach out. Um, I, I, ended, I developed a little bit of a system to doing them because um, I, I would write, um, you know, 100 a year. So, um, but we had really positive comments about that. People really look forward to them and they, um, they love receiving them. And we believe it just, there's a really strong differentiator. There aren't, most companies, it's like, uh, thanks for being here another year. So I was talking to one employee who celebrated his 10 year anniversary on Monday and his email, um, he shared it with me, was, was just fantastic and really meant a lot to him and made him laugh at some of the stories that people remembered. So are there any other questions? Because things are, ah. I've made it a habit to speak. All right, to fellow employees and see that. Yes, it's, thanks Bobby. It's really important that we are recognizing that. Um, I think people are feeling, um, like there's a lot of challenges and a lot of unknowns. And I think anytime we can raise their spirits that um, we have actually a moral obligation to do that. Great. Anyone else have any questions? Oh. No, I think we're, we're good. I'm going to stop recording. Perfect.